Hello and welcome back to Car Chat TV. I'm Oliver. I'm gonna give you a good old go, I promise you. No. Oh, should have wiped my bottom. Hello and welcome back to Car Chat TV. I'm Oliver. Now we've reviewed loads of SUVs on our channel, particularly seven seaters, Kia Sorento, BMW X5, Q7, Discovery. Today, Mercedes-Benz GLE 400D. I'm excited to have a look at this because we don't get many Mercedes on our channel. And there's one reason for that. Well, we don't really like them, but we're gonna give you a good old go, I promise. Oh, I burnt my passion pillows there. It's a hot day. I do like the grill, always like the grill. It's very rocky. It reminds me of uh, Michael Jackson's leather jacket. <laughs> With all the stud work. Again, very subjective. You might be BMW X5 or Q7, Audi kind of person. Love the wheels, love the AMG orange calipers. This is the AMG line trim as we come back. Nice little kick plate to stand in, help you get in. Adaptive air suspension, so it goes up and down and all that. This is the back. This is what is gonna be really interesting, having a look at how I get into those seven seater space at the back, because that's what we've done on some of the other reviews we've done with the SUVs, just to see how, let's be honest, if you're six foot and over, you're not sitting back there, but it is always good to, to try out and see how it works. So by the end of this video, what are you gonna get? That's a good question. You're gonna know if the GLE is an SUV for you. We're gonna take it out on the road, test what it's like handling, because this thing has got 325 brake horsepower, not to 62 in like 5.7 seconds. That's a little bit of woof, isn't it? Right, time for me to jump in the car, show him some B-roll. So first things first, we wanna check out the space in the third row, the seven seater beast of this thing. There they are, they're looking at me. I don't know why we do this bit, but we're gonna have to do it. I've pulled this forwards. There are electric buttons on the edge of each seat and in the boot to help you out. I'm gonna jump in. I can get through this gap. Oh my, ah, what a beautiful shot of my rumpus you got. Okay, uh, I'm in the back. It is weird, because it goes from really nice headroom to like a lump here, and then, brilliant, thanks very much. Can we not just, this is the design of the car. Right, let's see if I can press this button, bring these seats back. Electric, sometimes if you press, oh, that was that one. Oh, why does it do that? Right, let's do this one. I'm gonna press it in, ready? We'll do it together. Bring it back. Pressed it once, didn't do anything. Bring it forward, it doesn't do anything. Hold, right, I'm holding it, there we go. They are temperamental, so I'm moving my legs because I'm not gonna lie, there's not much room. Oh my gosh, here it comes. It's coming back. Now when I press it forwards, here we go. Oh, see, then you gotta press it forward to get it to go back. Ah! The buttons are not good on this thing. Ah, so you have to stop it. When you bring the buttons, you have to bring them forward and then press it again to stop it. Okay, to show you how much knee room I have. Ah! Can you see the top of my knee? There is no knee room. There is no knee, ro knee room in here. Can't even get my words out. They are supposed to be for adults, but um, I don't know how true that is unless you're a hobbit from the Shire or a small child then no, you don't want to be back here. There's not much headroom, I'm 5'11". Forget about it if you're taller than that. No way you want to be up front in the business end uh, of this vehicle. But there you go, a couple of cup holders here and some charging points. You don't want to be in here long, it's very claustrophobic. I would say the Discovery has the best seven seater from, from memory. Um, let me know in the comments if you've ever been a seven seat passenger. What was your experience like? Hmm? Yeah, right, get me out of here. I want to get out because I'm a, it's the most hottest day in the world. Well, I pressed that once this time. The buttons are weird. So I'm inside the Mercedes 400D GLE. I'm just going over a few little bumps, just checking out the suspension. Inside, we've got to be honest, this is a nice place to be. We know Mercedes are good for their posh materials. Oh, I've just gone through some shade. I've just seen the ambient lighting here. It's like on orange at the moment, that's pretty nice. I've got these little flappy paddles at the back, small, remind me a bit of Audi uh, paddles. I think BMW do the best. Wheels good, the display is insane. Two 12.3 inch infotainment screens. I love it. The only thing we've seen now is obviously you can get the hyper screen. Now since seeing that with that screen that all links one, that's all I want. So I mean, yeah, it's good, 
don't really like this black bit in the middle here, but it's two separate screens. It works, it's clear, it's precise. I can also change the display because this has got mild hybrid technology. So the car cannot work alone on electricity. It can't. It's got a little motor and a little battery, and what that does is it harvests some of the power and some of the energy when it's coasting, when it's braking, and then it puts it back into a motor and helps the engine out when it needs to. And mild hybrid technology, uh, some of us know, it can actually help the economy and efficiency of miles per gallon by up to 10%. So it is a good thing to have. So we have reset the trip, so we'll see what MPG we get in the GLE when we come back. Now Mercedes say about 33 miles to the gallon for the 400D, which you'd want more really, wouldn't you? Really, you would want more. So I have the display up here. I don't know if you can see that in the back. So you've got your consumption going up and down so you can see how you're driving and what MPG you're gonna get. And then when I start to brake, look, it goes into the charge. Can we see that? It goes into the charge. That's charging up that mild hybrid tech. And on this side, you've got a little display that says acceleration, constant, and coasting and the, and the bars light up what you're doing the most anyway i don't really like that display so i'm going to get that back to this right okay coming up to a few roundabouts this thing has got 325 brake horsepower 700 newton meters of torque and 0 to 62 in 5.7 seconds i want to get it on the straight road and see what that feels like we need to talk about this a few negatives about the car they are subjective, but in my opinion, the overall look of the exterior doesn't really do it for me. I much prefer the meaty looks of the X5 or the Audi. But again, that's subjective. You'll have to let me know if you agree or you just love the look of this car. And you're like, oh, it's amazing. Secondly, the seven seats, the space in the back, they're not that usable really for adults. Yeah, you can get kids in there. And also with the seven seats in the back, the buttons are really fiddly. Now, after a while of owning the car, I'm sure you get the gist on how to use them, but someone that's using it for the first time, you press them, it goes back, you press it forward, you have to stop it. It was just a little bit too fiddly for my liking. When they've got everything else so well thought out and well designed, the buttons just didn't really work that well and they're too fiddly for me, but yeah, a couple of negatives there. Okay, so it's time to have a little bit of fun. I've got some lovely winding B roads. I'm just dropping it into sport mode and let's see what this mammoth beast can do all right that's good that's good acceleration there i just hope i don't meet anyone on the other side of the road the handle's good yeah the suspension's got a little bit stiffer and because it's adaptive air suspension it will drop the ride height depending on what mode you are on a little bit of brake brakes are good Ooh, that's when you really feel the weight when you're using the brakes to slow you down, I've got a tight little bit here. This is when you feel so wide on the road. Now, this is not the best road in the world. Loads of potholes, but I'm not really feeling them, if I'm being honest, and I'm in sport mode. So, it's a little bit stiffer. There we go. Now, put the power down, out, looking out on the corner, getting ready for the scouts to go, oh, look at that guy in the SUV. Very cool. Power down again. Let's use some of the paddles. Let's see what the paddles are like. There we go, on the left. They could be a bit better, not too small. Oh, that sounds tasty. Oh, yes. Oh, and we're floating through it. The steering's fine. The steering does what it needs to do. You throw it in, it's responsive. It's a little bit stiffer in the sport, set, in the sport setting, but I like that. I do like it. It just allows you to focus a little bit more and everything stiffens up. But most of the time, I would be having it in comfort mode with lighter steering and the lighter setup and also saving the MPG. But this isn't my car, so sport mode. So the car feels very beasty, very wide on the road. The suspension is great, really well damped, super smooth, eating up all the undulations in the road. And the steering wheel just fits nicely in the hand. Got these uh, nobules here that just fit well and feel my thumb. I love the bonnet. This one thing I do love is the appearance of the bonnet, how it comes up in these two giant creases, almost like a shark fin, just giving a little bit of an added aggressive performance element. So we've got some drive modes. I've also got lane keep assist on, which I hate, um, but we can turn that off quite easy. 
the thing, the infotainment works so well. Touch screen, you can literally just go to settings. I feel the car uh, harvesting some stuff there. Right, I'm literally in here and I can turn that off. That's how quick. Some other cars to turn off the lane keep assist is pretty tricky. I did that seconds, all right, and it's very easy and it tells you exactly what does what and there's other uh, assistance and stuff you can do there. I'm spinning the car around, awesome. Hit the home screen on there to get it back. Right, let's go through some of the drive modes because not all of us know about it. So we've got Eco, and you can see the settings on the side there. Uh, the engine, engine's in Eco. You've got the, oh, we've got an off-road set in there as well, cool. Uh, suspension's comfort, steering's comfort, and so forth. Comfort mode is what you're gonna have this on. It's what I would have it on. Steering's really lovely and light. Suspension is super soft, and you know, it's not gonna rev through the gears because you don't want that performance. So you're gonna save on your MPG. And then, obviously, individual setting. Said that a bit weird, but you can set up the parameters to what you want. You might want the steering a little bit stiffer, suspension a little bit softer, whatnot. You get the gist. It's time to do a 0 to 62. 5.7, seconds, I believe this car can do. Now, I know it's a big SUV and we're doing a lot of the performance kind of stuff, but you're gonna do it. This is the 325 Brake 400D. So I wanna feel, and that's pretty good in an SUV, isn't it? 5.7 seconds. So let's go from a complete standstill, go. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Come on, come on, this is a good road. Oh, and there we have it. Right, and this is, <laughs> there we go. That's when you feel some of the suspension. I've got it in sport mode, so there we go. And that was good. That was good, that's still pretty fast, isn't it? You do not want to be going too quick in a over two ton SUV, but you have to do it for a little bit of fun every now and again, right? Now, space for me in this car isn't an issue. As you can see, I've got oodles of headspace, but I've got Adam with me in the back. I've got it on comfort mode to give him a little bit of a, a nice ride with the suspension. So Adam, talk to me about comfort levels and space back there. Okay, so my um, my opinion of the GLE is it is a nice it's a nice cruiser, let's be honest. I've got plenty of room in the back. Look, I've got my camera set up, look at my knee room. There's literally, you could get your whole family in here. Um, I've got plenty of room for my knees and it's actually a nice place to be. So the seat's pretty comfy. So my experience if I'm like, if I'm like just relaxing into them, it does actually support you quite well. And uh, one thing I do like is sort of the, uh, the ambient lighting you get, it's just a fairly nice place to be. So um, yeah, all in all, I'd give it the maximum amount of stars. Um, there's quite a lot of light and yeah, no complaints really. Maximum amount of stars. He hasn't done that for any car. I guess he's happy. One thing I need to mention is the quality of cameras. Let's be honest, let's hold our hands up in the air they are very crisp and HD quality. And as I click through these, you can see a vast array of cameras from the side, from the front. There we go, the camera's there on this. It just looks well. And also at the top, you've got drive forward to, for parking space. You've got parking assist on this GLE as well. So the camera quality is second to none. It's really, really good. I've noticed it, so I wanted to let everyone know. So I'm on my way back to Centurion Automotive who are awesome to us. Let's take out this car. This car is for sale, so check it out in the link in the description below if it's a bit of you. So we're gonna to go to the MPG now. Mercedes say, I said at the start, we reset the trip, 33 miles to the gallon. Very, very important, especially with today's fuel prices. And it says I'm averaging at the moment 28.2 MPG. So it's not that far off because we did give it a little bit of a hoon there about here and there. So 28.2, it's still gonna cost you quite a bit in the fuel. Is that gonna be enough for you? You'll have to let me know in the comments below. Right, but huge thanks to Centurion Automotive where you can actually buy this car from. Link will be in the description below. But that has been our episode on the Mercedes-Benz GLE 400D AMG line. This car is Marmite. I absolutely love the interior. It's plush. I love the tech. I'm a huge geek when it comes to gadgets. And I love those big whoppers of infotainment screens. And the suspension is really well damped. It's super soft and comfy. But the looks, come on, let's be honest, people. Is this better than the BMW X5 or a Q7? For me, I know it's subjective, but if I'm pying with my money, I'm gonna be going down the BMW Audi route. That's not to say this isn't a good car, it is. We've just driven it, I've driven it, I've showed you how good it is, but let me know in the comments down below. It is subjective. Do you prefer the look of this 
over other cars, I want to know your thoughts. Let me know. If you've loved the episode, throw me a like, get subbed, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.